Welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Connectpreneur is a global community of over 25,000 investors, CEOs, entrepreneurs, business leaders, and professional service providers from around the world. This is our 80th Connectpreneur event overall over the last 10 years and our 32nd virtual event, um, which is now the largest monthly investor pitch event in the world. We've had over 830 presenting companies, and our Connectpreneur Investor Network now totals over 3,200 accredited private investors, angels, and family offices who are interested in investing in awesome deals that they can find through the Connectpreneur community and our events. 10 years ago, we originally started Connectpreneur as a forum for business leaders, entrepreneurs, and investors to connect and engage, to learn, to be inspired, and to celebrate innovation and entrepreneurship. And our intent is to help our community managers to find capital, uh, for our investors to find great deals, and our presenting companies to find partners, customers, and just for our attendees to meet and engage with great business leaders. And our events all are all about connecting. So this is why we do our events as meetings. So everybody on the meeting can see each other in private message with everyone. So uh, we want people to be able to connect as best as they can because this is virtual and we can't do this in person right now. Um, and we also publish a list of all of the registered guests in the back of each program book. So hopefully you have already downloaded the program book. Skylar, who's our community manager, she will post the link to the program book today so you guys can download it if you haven't already. A couple things about our event today. After our final presenter, we will open up all 12 breakout rooms. Each breakout room is hosted by one of our presenting companies, and we have 12 great ones today. Um, you as an attendee, as an investor, you'll be able to enter and leave whichever breakout room you'd like. So please do visit with as many of the presenting companies that you have an interest in investing in or learning more about. And the purpose of the breakout room, remember, is for our presenting companies to go deeper with interested investors and partners. So please remember that this is their room and they're hosting it. So uh, conduct yourselves accordingly. Um, also, with respect to the group chat box, please be respectful and tactful. So you can put your LinkedIn and other contact info in an introduction, but please do not overload the chat. Um, and unless you're a presenter, we ask that you not post more than two or three times. And our presenters, they'll be posting links to their deck and executive summaries, as well as their Calendly link for follow-up meetings. They're going to post that in the group chat, along with um, you know any kind of registration information for follow-on meetings. Uh, also, very important note, the group chat, uh, as you guys know, have, will have dozens, if not hundreds of messages. So we recommend that you download your chat transcript before you leave the meeting. Uh, actually, we recommend that you download the chat transcript before you go into the breakout rooms because you don't want to lose it. Um, and how you do that is you click on the chat icon on the bottom of the toolbar. You'll see a little rounded square with three dots on it. And then click on the icon and hit save. And your chat transcript will be saved. You can review and follow up with all the messages later. And there will probably be many. Um, also, we're doing polls today. We are going to be polling our investors. So we have investor-only polls after the 4th, 8th, and 12th presenter. And please remember, this is for investors only. They're confidential. We're not going to be sharing any poll results with the audience, strictly for the benefit of our presenting companies and our investors. And... Uh, also, so so the investors, if you guys could just indicate which companies you're interested in when we put up the poll, that would be great. Um, we're also going to poll, do two polls, one at the beginning of the event and one before we go into breakout rooms for our sponsors. Our sponsors are the awesome companies that make things happen. They are listed in the program book. I will read them out momentarily, but uh, we will have uh, polls for them as well. So if you're interested in um, utilizing some of their services, just let us know. We'll make sure you guys get connected. Um, I also want to thank our awesome Connectpreneur ambassadors who have done a great job spreading the word about our events worldwide. We have 25 of them. We're adding more. If you're interested, let us know. Let Skyler know. And I also want to thank our awesome prep team, especially Inez LeBeau. Our prep team is listed in the program book uh, before the sponsor page, and uh, they've done a great job getting our presenters ready. So anyway, here's the rundown for today. We have 12 total presenters. Each presentation is four minutes. We don't have Q&A. So if you have questions, just reserve those for the breakout rooms. We'll open up the breakout rooms after our 12th presenter. And again, if you're an interested investor, please indicate on the investor poll 
and and or stop by the breakout room of the presenters. Um, our first six presenters will be introduced by Daryl Barrows, who's a partner at Next, powered by Schulman Rogers. And our next, our final six presenters will be introduced by Mark Haas, who's the CEO of AEG. Um, well, I also want to mention that we have a great YouTube channel. We have over 400 videos of our alumni presenters, so please check it out and subscribe. We also have a free Slack channel for our community. We have over 4,000 business leaders on it. Feel free to join either or both. It's no cost. Uh, you can share information about your events or about yourselves or if you're hiring or looking for something. Um, this is a, a way we try to you know, promote connection uh, in our community. So uh, we'll post the links to the, to the Slack channel and the YouTube channel so you can sign up. Uh, final note on our upcoming events. Our next virtual rocket pitch is October 27th. So uh, registration is open on Eventbrite. We'll put the link for that. So please register now. And we have three in-person events coming up this fall. Our next in-person event, if you're in the Washington DC area, will be on the morning of October 20th, downtown DC. We're going to have 350 to 400 attendees with over 150 private investors and angels. Early bird is in effect, so you can register today. Uh, we also have um, an event in Baltimore, Maryland on the morning of November 16th, as well as on the evening of December 13th in Tyson's Corner. So stay tuned. You can go to our website at connectpreneur.org for more information, or we'll post the information to register. And if you're interested in sponsoring or exhibiting or presenting, just let Skylar know, uh, our community manager, and she'll get you the information. One other event I want to mention is the Accelerate Investor Conference, which is taking place on November 2nd and 3rd in Arlington, Virginia. Um, we have awesome keynote speakers, 40 seed and A round companies, and over 50 venture investment firms have signed up to attend. Uh, Accelerate is still looking for some angel and venture investor judges. So if you're interested, please um, email info at accelerate2022.org and the website is accelerate2022.org. You can register to attend there. And um, yeah, and that's it. So uh, let's, um, Sky, why don't we put up our first poll, which is a poll for our sponsors. And these are the people that make our events possible. So if you have any interest in these services, let us know. Uh, we have, I want to read our sponsors out. They are in the program book, but uh, I, I do want to read them because they're making this event possible. So again, if you're interested in utilizing some of their services, please indicate and we'll make sure you're connected. But I want to shout out Next, powered by Showman Rogers, Modus Create, Stella Pop, Startup Grind, AEG, the Northern Virginia Chamber of Commerce, EO, the Entrepreneurs Organization, Pitch Force, Ryan and Wetmore, Truest Financial, Refraction. I'm broadcasting from Connect Mirror Studios here in Refraction. It is a leading co-working slash innovation community here in the Washington, D.C. region. Uh, CEO Esther Lee should be on right now, and she's offering two free months if you sign up for a one-year commitment here. It's a great space and a great building, so check it out. I uh, want to thank Keiretsu Forum, Enterprise Transformation Services, Angels and Life Sciences Investors, the New Jersey Angels, Shulman Rogers, Georgetown University Entrepreneurship, the Baltimore Angels, Founder Institute, Fitzy, Maryland Tech Council, the Robert H. School, Robert H. Smith School of Business Dingman Center for Entrepreneurship and the Dingman Angels, the Institute for Excellence in Sales, National Association of Business Owners and Entrepreneurs, SAPA, Center for Advancing Innovation, the MIT Alumni Angels of Washington, D.C., Monty Jade, uh, Greater Washington, D.C. Science and Technology Association, the annual Wharton Summit, the U.S. International Development Center, and Kobe. Thank you guys so much for all of your support um, now and over the years. So thank you guys for participating in the, in the poll as well. And... Um, I think we can go ahead and get started. So uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Daryl Barros, uh, who, who will introduce our first batch of presenters. Um, Daryl is an experienced entrepreneur. He's a fund manager and he's an attorney. He's a partner with Next, powered by Shulman Rogers, which is disrupting the way that startup law is being performed. Um, Next offers package offerings on a fixed price basis. They are an award-winning outfit. Um, and they were recently selected by Law.com 
and Legal Week as the startup emerging growth company law firm of the year. They beat out several huge and well-known firms. Congratulations, Daryl, and welcome. Thank you, Tian. I'd like to thank you, Skylar, and the Connect and our team for today's event. Um, Shoman Rogers next is honored to be a longtime sponsor of this program. I had a little pitch, but you did it better than I did, so I'll just move. I'll just move right on. You can contact us or reach us at www.next.law. Uh, the first company I have the privilege of introducing is Accidental Entertainment. Um, this seems like a very exciting company. I'm looking forward to this pitch. Accidental Entertainment is a unique, independent music sync and artist company deeply focused on music licensing and sync, music supervision, music publishing, music production, and artist development. Everything. Please welcome Adam Mosley, CEO. Hi. I'm Adam Mosley, and I'm very excited to introduce you to Accidental Entertainment. Accidental delivers the artist and their music directly to the hands and ears of the creative decision makers. The music industry is a broken old Goliath that can't adapt quickly to change. There are huge gaps between the artists and those decision makers. The sync business is generally run by admin people with no experience in artist development, and for them it's generally a passive process. Accidental bridges that gap between the music supervisors and the artists. We have an outstanding team. We have credibility, dedication, and experience. We have feet on the ground, we act quickly, and we discover new artists. We provide unique services and develop and promote those artists. We're focused on music licensing and sync, music publishing, and artist development. So how does this all work? Well, we know that all visual media uses music, whether it's TV shows, movies, commercials, video games or trailers, or on YouTube or TikTok, and some TV shows use more than 20 songs per episode. Accidental meets that demand. We have an artist roster of more than 120 artists and more than 6,000 songs and we place music in visual media. That way we earn commission on the upfront licensing fee and become co-owner of the publishing rights. That creates recurring revenue because we control the IP in perpetuity and it creates an annuity. We also build a catalog of music publishing copyright ownership. The US music publishing market registered a 9.6 revenue increase to over $4 billion in 2020, which was up from $3.72 billion in 2019. Music licensing represented 6.6% .6 of that industry, with over a billion dollars, which was up 11% on 2019. And that's just in the US. Our ROI over the next five years is projected to be 68.25%. So how are we different from the competition? Well. We have an amazing team. We're uniquely qualified, and we also perform the old school art of artist development. We nurture and promote our artists. We create a sense of family, and we provide Accidental Studios a state-of-the-art recording facility. For our clients, we have an amazing selection of US and international artists and songs. We're a one-stop shop. Every song is pre-cleared 100% and ready to go. If they want it, they got it. There's no time wasted. And sometimes we're able to submit months in advance with customized playlists. Our network grows every day. And here you'll see some familiar brand names, I hope. And we have a favored relationship with Netflix, whereby we get access to their in-house online production schedule. So we're able to submit six, eight, or 10 months in advance, sometimes before production even starts. And here's some familiar faces and shows, I hope. Our team is expertly poised to take Accidental to the next level, and we have 75 years of combined experience. We are passionate about music and our artists. So the artists create music that goes in syncs, that creates revenue, gives us publishing rights, creates recurring revenue, which is an annuity. We build the catalog, which is perfect for an M&A. In fact, music copyright ownership is the hottest space in the entertainment industry. We've raised $350,000 and we're looking to raise a further $3 million. It will be used for catalog acquisition and to add specialists to our team. Thank you. 
Um, I now have the privilege of introducing Eclipse Therapeutics. Eclipse Therapeutics develops novel and highly differentiated drugs for diseases with significant unmet medical needs. Um, Eclipse has created two products poised to enter human trials. Please, please welcome Raymond Polk, the CEO. Hello, uh, my name is Ray Hauk and uh, Eclipse Therapeutics is focused on the development of two novel drug candidates for the treatment of diseases of high unmet needs. Our lead product is for the treatment of gastroparesis, which is the delayed stomach emptying of foods. There are 600,000 patients in the US with a high hospitalization rate. Over half of these patients have severe or very severe disease, Two thirds of these patients are dissatisfied with their current treatments. Why are they dissatisfied? It's because all the current treatments are only treating the symptoms of the disease and do not treat the underlying biology of the disease. Eclipse's drug M107 is the first drug for gastroparesis that's actually going after the underlying biology of the disease. How are we doing that? Uh, gastroparesis is caused by the body producing an overabundance of M1 pro-inflammatory macrophages, which M107, our drug, corrects. Thus, M107 is driving the body back to normal stomach empty. M107 is an oral small molecule that's been approved in South Korea and only in South Korea and thus has a safety database of over 3,600 patients. Eclipse has the worldwide exclusive license for M107 for all diseases. And the FDA has told us that we can proceed to a phase two human clinical trial. We have patent life to 2043, and the gastroparesis market is estimated at nearly $6 billion and growing. We project the M107 peak sales opportunity to be over a billion dollars a year. We have received excellent product traction for both of our products. Uh, for M107, we've gotten tremendous buy-in from the key opinion leaders in gastroparesis. These are the physicians that write the majority of the scientific literature in the disease, and we have that go-ahead from the FDA. For our second product, which is called M102 for the treatment of ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease, we have received $5.1 million of non-dilutive grants, which fully fund M102 into its phase one clinical trial. We also have excellent traction with potential strategic acquirers. We have a very experienced management team that's poised to advance Eclipse to the next value inflection points. Uh, my management team was predominantly from my previous company, Thar Pharmaceuticals, where we had a product that we eventually sold to Grundenthal out of Germany. So we have done this all before, both in terms of developing new drugs and in selling our companies and those products. Eclipse is advancing to significant value inflection points. After this current round, we plan a $25 million round in late 2023 that could be an institutional, private, strategic, or public round. And we already have a venture investor who wants to lead or co-lead that larger round. This drives us to significant value inflections in the $400 to $600 million range based upon comparables, and we have significant potential acquirers. We're seeking a 5 million convertible note round. We've already closed 1.6 million of that. Uh, the round is a, has a 20% discount to the next equity round or a valuation cap of 20 million, uh, whichever is less. And we project an investor cash on cash return of up to 24X. So thank you very much. And please join us in a breakout room where we can answer your more in-depth questions. Thank you for Eclipse Therapeutics. I would like to introduce a septoscope. A septoscope is a medical device solution for infection protection for clinicians and patients. Please welcome Scott Mader, CEO. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time and thanks for inviting me for the next four minutes to join you 
in introducing my company, Aseptoscope, as we introduce a technology that addresses a $40 billion problem in the United States alone. The $40 billion problem is healthcare associated infection or HAI. Uh, HAI is an existential challenge in modern healthcare delivery because patients shouldn't worry if at their most vulnerable, they should pursue healthcare or whether pursuing healthcare will make them a subject to an infection that might take their life. In the US, 2 million times a year, patients are infected while pursuing healthcare. 400,000 of these patients die and $40 billion a year is spent in an attempt to address this issue. The CDC and healthcare providers focus on these core indices for addressing healthcare associated infection, and they're making good progress in these areas. And yet, despite this, healthcare associated infection or HAI rates persist. So you have to ask the question, why? If you go back to the very foundation of healthcare associated infection uh, uh, issues that are addressing it, hand hygiene is at the core. Uh, before and after every patient, clinicians wash their hands. Uh, in 2015, the question was asked in the literature, what if there was a third hand touching us that was actually never cleaned? Since that time, the literature has brought to bear that factually this is true. The most commonly used medical device technology, the stethoscope, is just like a clinician's third hand. It infects patients as, as rapidly as the hands. It is touching patients 5 billion times a year in the U.S. alone. It is highly contaminated, 4% compliance with cleaning it between patients and we'll tell you why. But ultimately, even when cleaned, this is not fully effective, rendering the stethoscope a major weakness in hospital infection prevention practices. Now, part of it is that innovation has not lent a hand. Today, clinicians only have these two options, alcohol cleaning for 60 seconds between every patient, according to the CDC's directive. You can see why uh, only 4% compliance here. Nobody in high workflow healthcare has that kind of time. And when they do, it is rarely returning the stethoscope to clean status. The only other option are cheap facsimiles to professional grade stethoscopes called disposable stethoscopes that stay with that single patient. It turns out they don't block transmission. And as any clinician that uses them knows, it is uh, not something that is um, uh, going to render a, a good exam and they will miss key findings. We've designed the Discover system to address this issue completely. It is always clean, highly effective, immediately applied, easy to use and demonstrated in clinical trials to completely block in, uh, pathogens from any, uh, any uh, uh, transmission potential to patients. It is superior to alcohol cleaning, including alcohol resistant pathogens, which it totally blocks. It is acoustically invisible, meaning it is superior to disposable stethoscopes, giving a completely clear examination. And in a seven center US study, we have published the results showing that physicians and nurses and techs believe it improves workflow, compliance, and patient safety. The Discover system is forecasted to reach $56 million in revenue in the US by 2024. We launched this quarter are actively taking customers on, including customers like the Cleveland Clinic, who are looking at a different angle. How do patients feel knowing that they are protected in just a second and can see that they are protected when getting their examination. We believe this will result in excellent findings. My team and I have launched innovation in clinical care in the past with great success, strong exits, and we're happy to do it again in healthcare associated infection with the Discovery System and our full portfolio. We are now seeking $4 million in a bridge in the form of a convertible note. We have completed 2.4 of that. We seek 1.6 million more. There's a 20% discount round applied directly to the uh, use of funds for the launch of the Discover system as growth capital. We hope you'll consider for this reason and more that you uh, could invest in a septoscope with a wonderful success. We do in every round, and we've just invested $250,000 as founders in this round alone. Thank you very much for your time, and I'll see you in the breakout room. Um, next, I'd like to introduce Channel Program. Channel Program is a fast-growing, channel-focused marketplace solution company built to help technology vendors, IP provider, IT providers, and investment professionals. Please welcome Kevin Lancaster, CEO. Thank you. Uh, good morning. My name is Kevin Lancaster, and thank you for allowing us to present channelprogram.com today. Um, we are a 10-month-old startup. 
uh, based in Maryland, and we just passed 1.4 million in recurring revenues. So, sorry, I gotta get my slide here. Sorry about that. So uh, what is channel program? So we've built and proven a marketplace that brings IT vendors and their channel partners together while generating market intelligence for strategic buyers and investors. Oh, sorry. Here's the problem in a nutshell. There are more than 35,000 technology vendors fighting to attract the attention and loyalty and retention of more than 1.1 million IT service providers made up of MSPs, MSSPs, bars, systems integrators, distributors, and IT consultants. The old way of building channel is broken and we exist to change it. Sorry. The solution, just 10 months, as I mentioned, from product launch, we've become the world's largest channel-focused marketplace, connecting IT vendors with prospects and partners. In fact, we built and launched a more effective market awareness and lead generation platform for technology vendors. This is a key factor why vendors have rushed to sign up with us and why we scaled so quickly. We've also generated hundreds of end user and expert product reviews on the platform. We, uh, we also launched this week uh, a product we call Channel Charge, uh, which will provide key market intelligence to help channel partners, investors, and strategic buyers make better M&A uh, decisions. Oh, I'm going the wrong way about that. All right, our products. We've launched three primary products since uh, December. The vendors love our value proposition and how we position our products to help them scale. Uh, Channel Explorer is focused on product reviews and vendor lead generation. Channel Pitch is focused on vendor lead generation and channel feedback. Channel Charts provide real-time data, market research, and reporting. Slide progression here. All right. We've uh, demonstrated product market fit. We have traction and we're gaining momentum. As I mentioned again, we launched 10 months ago. We've generated a total of 1.6 million in revenue from technology vendors, of which 1.4 million is annual subscription revenue. We're starting to see velocity with nearly 300,000 closed sales since August 1st. We've also generated over a million in new pipeline during the same time period. Competitive advantage. The channel has been ignored for far too long. Primary competitors like Gartner, G2, Software Advice, and Captera, they built their business models around focusing on enterprise, B2B direct, and B2C. We have first mover advantage. We're singularly focused on the IT channel, and we have the experience as technology vendors, IT service providers, and investors ourselves. Our TAM, our initial TAM is 2.1 billion, which includes 35,000 technology vendors. These are SaaS, software, hardware, and professional services companies that sell to or through the channel. In 2023, we'll increase our TAM by packaging and selling our data back to the vendors and channel partners, as well as to private equity, VCs, private investors, and strategic buyers. We'll further increase our TAM as we begin to focus on monetizing more than 5,000 active users in our platform today. Let's see here, the team. We brought the uh, band back together again and brought in some of the best talent in the industry to, to add to the team and help us scale. For Matt and I, this is our third organization we scaled. More broadly, the team has four startups under its belt, the 50 million plus in channel exit since 2018. Our projections through 2024, we're focused on predictable recurring revenue. And what's great is we'll end the year at 1.8 million in revenue. We'll have 100 plus vendors and roughly 7,000 users inside the platform. The opportunity, we're seeking a total of 2 million in funding via convertible notes of which $725,000 is committed. We're offering a $50,000 minimum investment, a 36 month term at a 5% interest rate. This includes a 25% early acquisition kick and a 10% discount upon conversion. We'll also consider additional incentives for larger or strategic investments. So thanks again. As you can see, we have a bright future ahead of ourselves, and we'd love to talk with you about it. Uh, on behalf of my team, I do appreciate your time and attention today. We look forward to seeing you in the breakout room shortly. Great. Thank you so much, Kevin. Let's put up our first investor poll, Sky. This is for our investors only, and it's uh, for to indicate interest uh, that you might have in our first four presenters, and those were accidental entertainment, Eclipse, Acceptoscope, and channel program. And um, just as a reminder, all of our presenting companies today, we have 12 of them, they'll be hosting their own breakout room at the end of the final presentation. And um, you can have 
that opportunity to ask the management team more questions and go deeper. Also want to remind everybody that um, our presenting companies will be open to doing deep dive meetings next week or the week after and um, may even be hosting additional longer longer form group meetings for investors. So um, anyway, again, this is for investors only. So I still see some poll results coming in. We're not, this is a confidential poll. We're not gonna share the information with anyone but the presenters. So um, last call for investors, if anyone else um, is interested in, in, and we'll connect you with, with the presenting companies, but anyone else interested in learning more or investing in the companies, please let us know. Uh, also, yeah, so reminder again, we have breakout rooms after the 12th presenter. We have eight more to go. So I think, Sky, we can end the poll, and I'll turn it back over to Daryl, who will introduce our next presenter. Daryl. Um, the next okay. one will be City Vest Capital with Alan Donefeld. So Alan, we'll have you share your screen. Hello. Thanks, everyone, for, uh, for joining me today. I'm happy to present... Uh, an investment opportunity into CityVest for raising two and a half million. And uh, I think you'll be uh, excited by what we've built. You know, the, the leading five private equity firms manage about $2 trillion, a little bit over $2 trillion. One of the largest, Blackstone, is finalizing the closing on a $20 billion uh, real estate private equity fund. What do these guys know that the rest of the individual investors don't know? What they know is that real estate outperforms all other asset classes with a uh, lower volatility, less risk. But individuals have about 3% of their investment capital in real estate, which is uh, much lower than pension funds, which is about 10%. Um, Tiger 21 members, which are ultra high net worth investors, have about uh, 23% of their uh, asset allocation in real estate. So given the explosion of real estate, why aren't individual investors investing more capital in real estate? Well, real estate deal sponsors uh, typically charge high fees. They're not diversified. They're going deal by deal, and they underperform. Crowdfunders typically have a negative selection and somewhat high fees. REITs uh, underperform private funds with a disappointing 3% dividend. The best asset class with Blackstone, KKR, Colony, Carlisle, Apollo, all of them know real estate outperforms, but real estate private equity typically has very high multi-million dollar investment minimum. So it's very hard to access those funds. CityVest is a online real estate investment platform allowing individual investors to invest as little as $25,000 to be able to access institutional real estate private equity funds. You go to our website, you can review uh, multiple transactions. They are all feeder funds where we aggregate the capital and then that pool of capital, which typically is around $5 million, is invested in an underlying real estate private equity fund. So we provide access to the institutional fund and we're able to negotiate better terms. So the CityVest Access Fund gets enhanced investment terms because we have this pooled capital of three to six million dollars. We have uh, unique access to the institutional funds because otherwise, if you didn't have multi-million dollars, you couldn't access those best funds. And we've reduced the risk of that investment by carefully screening funds, making sure that every fund that we invest in uh, is an institutional fund and has an auditor and administrator. The market is huge for uh, for accredited investors, 15 million individual accredited investors with uh, $50 trillion of aggregate net worth, investing about $163 billion a year in real estate private equity fund. And as I said early on, currently that's about 3% of their investment allocation. That should be increasing to around 10% over the next five years. CityVest is in a sweet spot for investors in that we are targeting institutional real estate funds, that top uh, quadrants. And on the top right side, it may, we make it accessible to individual investors. There are several other real estate uh, online platforms, but none of them offer both institutional funds and making them accessible 
to individual investors. So we're targeting these 15 million uh, individual investors offering the best of the annual 700 real estate funds that we're conducting due diligence on. Uh, we've now completed 15 access funds or feeder funds, aggregating $60 million in uh, assets under management. And all of our offerings provide us with uh, attractive recurring revenue that's accumulating year to year. Uh, we're looking forward to 10 million of aggregate capital, recurring capital uh, over the next couple of years. We have an extensive team, 150 years of experience, over $3, trillion, $3 billion of aggregate acquisitions, investment accounting and investor servicing experience. And our platform is one of the easiest and most attractive uh, in the industry. Uh, we got started a couple of years ago, completed a, an initial eight access funds uh, with 23 million of um, assets under management. Now we're at 15 million, 15 access funds, 60 million in AUM. Uh, we're currently raising two and a half million. We're looking for that capital to bring us to 2026, where we will have completed 100 access funds and 500 million in assets under management, we expect a five to 10 X return on our money. We're currently raising a two and a half million dollar so-called safe convertible note. It's a senior promissory note uh, with paying a 12% interest rate over three years to maturity. Uh, it's a fairly attractive 35% discount to the next round financing with warrant coverage. Look forward to uh, everyone who wants to join our breakout room after this talk. Thank you. I'd now like to introduce uh, um, Data Analytics. Thank you, Daryl. Hello, everyone. Did you know that chemical gene probes drive the science behind the entire biotech industry? DNA Analytics is disrupting this foundation by enabling scientists to develop medicines and cures in months, not years. Let me explain with an example what a chemical gene probe is, how it is used, and the benefits it provides. Consider being infected by the coronavirus. One way to detect this is to measure the amount of virus RNA in your saliva. This is quite a challenge though. As you can see, there's a lot of stuff in saliva. The trick is to generate signal from the small amount of virus RNA without generating signal from all the other stuff in your saliva. The goal is to develop a chemical gene probe that matches the virus RNA, but does not match anything else in your saliva. Did you know that in your saliva, the total combined string length of all chemical DNA and RNA is over 4 billion chemical letters? This makes for quite a challenge when developing a chemical gene probe because there are almost as many match locations as there are chemical letters. This means almost 4 billion possible matches. The solution is to predict the match strength of chemical gene probes. Shockingly, the algorithms to do so have not been improved since the 1990s. DNA analytics is the first to apply modern gene technologies and big data to chemical gene probe algorithms. Our algorithms identify the right chemical gene probe that enables scientists to develop medicines and cures in months, not years. By identifying the right chemical gene probe, our algorithms reduce the time, the cost, and the effort of optimizing the chemical gene probe in the laboratory and for clinical optimization. Our algorithms shorten the go-to market time from years to months and increase revenue. Our markets of gene testing, gene therapy, and gene vaccines are large and growing. It has taken $5 million to develop our algorithms. The algorithms are encoded into software and are ready for integration into the customer software pipeline. One of our customers, Switch Therapeutics, is developing medicines for nervous system disorders. Switch reports the integration of our algorithms into its software pipeline has dramatically improved the quality of its drug designs. 
Our team is uniquely qualified to scale. Together, we have over 80 years of experience in the chemical gene probe industry, and our strategic advisor is Inez LeBeau. My ask today is for contacts in the research and development divisions of gene diagnostic companies such as Exact Sciences, Invite, and Fulgit, gene therapy companies such as Sakarna, Regenex Bio, and Spark Therapeutics, gene vaccine companies such as Pfizer, Merck, and GSK, DNA manufacturers such as Biosearch Technologies, Integrated DNA Technologies, and Eurofins, and biotech vendors such as Thermo Fisher, Millipore Sigma, and Roche. Thank you, and I look forward to speaking with you in the breakout room. Thank you so much, Ray. At this point, I'd like to introduce um, Mark Haas, who's the CEO of AEG, and Mark will introduce our next six presenters. Mark is CEO and founder, co-founder of AEG, which is the DC and Baltimore region's top alliance of elite service provider advisors. They're expanding into Tampa as well and other regions around the United States. The members include some of the leading business professionals in the Washington, Northern Virginia, and Baltimore regions. I'm personally an investor and advisor to AEG, and Mark is also currently in fundraise mode, so uh, hopefully he'll post his executive summary in the chat box so any interested investors can reach out. Um, but Mark, uh, please give us a few more details about AEG, and thank you so much for your support of Connectpreneur. Uh, thanks, Tiana. Thanks, Skylar. Um, AEG stands for the Association for Enterprise Growth. We're building exclusive communities of both elite business advisors and successful mid-market CEOs. And what we do is uh, create those communities and provide them really unprecedented business development and peer-to-peer -peer networking opportunities, uh, building a relationship-based model rather than transactional. And we're starting in various cities, started in DC, expanded to Baltimore. And next month we're expanding to Tampa. So our thoughts are on Tampa, not just because it's an expansion city, but we have a lot of new friends down there. Um, the idea is we're going to weave those cities together to provide some, some expertise and resources to improve, improve the, you know, business opportunities and productivity of not just our advisors and CEOs, but regional economies too. So as Tian said, we really are starting our national expansion. We'll probably be launching uh, one city a quarter. Um, so if you are an elite business advisor, uh, a CEO, <clears throat> excuse me, or an investor and want to find out more, reach out to me. I've put my information in the chat box and I'll put a, uh, an investment summary there as well. Um, our first company introducing is Heritas. It is a, a South American company and it's focused on precision medicine. Um, focusing on genetic testing, both wearables and, um, and technology to do testing that's not been done um, in, in that marketplace. And it's really for both uh, you know, dietary lifestyle as well as special medical conditions that need to get some information on appropriate treatments and lifestyle changes. I'd like to introduce Marius Calme, CEO of Heritas. Thank you, Mark. Hello. Hi, we're Editas, a precision medicine company offering genetic services to consumers. If we take a look around this room, we can see a diverse group of people that not only looks different, but has distinct eating, exercising, even lifestyle habits. What most of us may not know is that some of us may carry disease-prone genetic variants that may activate based on what we eat and what we do. Have we taken a moment to think about the amount of ultra-processed foods we eat in a typical week? Well, that, along with our lifestyle, may be a silent pandemic that builds over time and may lead to chronic disease development. So how can we become informed about how other role our genes and our habits play in our wellness? We test people so they can understand how their unique genes and habits impact their long-term health with genetic and gut health information. We provide unique and personalized reports along with nutrition lifestyle recommendations. And we also have certified coaches available that help users interpret their, their reports and also assist them in, in achieve a specific goal. How does it work? Users enter our website and purchase our product at getrewill.com and they receive an at-home DNA and microbiome test so they can provide saliva and stool samples. Once we pick up their kit and we process the samples, users select a specific objective. It could be increasing energy, sleeping better, or even minimizing the risk of developing a certain disease, and they get unique reports and recommendations aligned with those objectives. Users can then schedule sessions with our certified coaches and within our platform and work on such plans. 
Our market is 26 million people in size, considering the top of the demographic and the percentage of people that spend their money on wellness, which on average is 32% worldwide. We value this market at $10.7 billion. The pandemic has brought us a couple of good things, one of them being that at-home testing has become mainstream, and the other, that preventive health has become a top priority for many. Given this and the, and, the, and the growth of the genetic sequencing market, there's been a lot of players that have been entering the, the, the business. We're unique because we provide an end-to-end -end service that combines DNA and microbiome data, along with assistance to help people achieve a specific objective. We also have in-house production that allows us to, to control quality and procurement standards. We have done this thanks to our long-term partnership with Illumina that provides us the next generation sequencing equipment. We also have great shareholders to support us along the way, one of them being Civic, a top tier laboratory in Argentina focused on biotechnology and clinical diagnostics. And the other one, Abioceres, which is a publicly listed NASDAQ biotechnology company that has invested in us through their corporate venture capital arm, Bio. We have a great diverse team with over 30 years experience in healthcare, biotechnology, genomic sequencing, and been developing businesses in Latin America. One of our directors is CEO of a public listed biotechnology company, and we also have great advisory in science and IP and patent development. We will reach the end of the year with $1.3 million in revenue, and by 2026, we'll reach $47.8 million. How are we going to do this? We're going to open four additional markets in Latin America. We're going to open our processing hub in Mexico and develop our app ecosystem to a subscription model that includes digitizing coaches and also uh, selling consumer uh, microbiome-based consumer goods. Since our inception in 2016, we've raised over $4.6 million in our U.S. parent company. And today, we're asking for $15 million, a round led by Theo, that has committed $5 million, and we're looking for additional investors that want to disrupt the wellness and nutrition space through precise information. Thank you so much for your time, and we're looking forward to meeting you at the breakout room. Our next company is Oxybiel. It's a water treatment uh, company, provides a processes to uh, break down uh, you know, polyfluoroalkyl substances, which there are a lot uh, that haven't been tested and many of them cause cancer and organ failure. Uh, current methods of just the filtration and uh, the high regulatory environment really needs to be fixed. So this is a terrific, terrific technology. Um, I'd like to introduce Ed Ricci, CEO of Oxybiel. Hello, everyone. Oxbiel Technologies is a cutting edge water treatment company. We are commercializing the electrochemical technology to completely destroy the harmful chemicals PFAS in water. What are PFAS? They are per and polyfluoral alkyl substances, a class of some 9,000 synthetic compounds known as the forever chemicals. They are found in a multitude of products from Teflon and cosmetics to food packaging and firefighting foam. They're connected to cancer, organ dysfunction and immunity system disorders. The problem is this, no incumbent commercial technology can destroy nor remove PFAS from the environment. Oxbiol can. The incumbent technology is an expensive multiple step process that merely filters the PFAS contaminated water onto carbon, resin or membranes. Then that media must be disposed or incinerated, causing the PFAS to re-enter the environment. Oxbiol's process is one step done on site and completely destroys the PFAS. It is economical and five to six times less expensive than the incumbent process. Our architecture and process results and, and process results in rapid scaling. Our design is 3D with anodes and cathodes that are stacked on each side of the process unit, separated by an ion separating membrane. The American Water Works Association says that PFAS cleanup in the United States is a $300 billion problem. Oxbiol has delineated its $16 billion beachhead of groundwater remediation with a bottoms up analysis of impacted sites subject to the greatest regulatory pressures. We have extensively benchmarked emerging competitors in their respective technical areas. Our, differenti our differentiators compared to these technologies are many. We destroy long and short chain PFAS in a matter of minutes, a solution that we have not seen any other competitor achieve. Our traction is significant. 
We have contracted over $2 million in DOD, EPA, and National Science Foundation monies. We completed treatability work for a Fortune 100 manufacturer, which will lead to pilot. Our patent pending is currently in review, and we are filing a provisional patent on advances accomplished in the last year. My partner and co-founder, Dr. Colleen Legsdens, has her PhD in metallurgical engineering and mass transport, the principles of our process. She is a veteran of the power industry and founded and took the electrochemical water treatment firm Axine Water through Series A. I was an environmental consultant and business leader for 36 years, focused on water remediation and taking my last business segment from $20 million to $100 million. We are placing a field pilot at davis Mountain Air Force Base in Tucson, Arizona in early 2023, followed by fabrication of pilot units for sale. Escalating revenue in 2024 and thereafter is supported by the manufacture and sale of these commercial units. We will progressively dominate the PFAS groundwater remediation market, then exit by sale to a multi-billion dollar water management company with whom we have ongoing conversations. We have a current open round for $1 million seed funding. This money will be used to scale our existing in-house pilot and aggressively advance to the commercial market. Thanks. I look forward to further discussion with you and seeing you in the breakout room. Thanks so much, Edward. Uh, let's go ahead and put up our second investor poll. And again, as a reminder, with the exception of DNA analytics, this is for investors only. So um, our last four presenters were CityVest Capital, DNA analytics. DNA is not looking for investors. They're looking for partners and people to help them. So if you are interested, we'll make a note of that. So, uh, but with respect to CityVest and Heritas and Oxbiel, uh, those are all for investors only. And then we had Heritas and we had Oxbiel Technologies. So I see some responses coming in. So uh, yeah, just please indicate, again, this is confidential. We will not share the results with the audience, only the names and contact info with the presenting companies. As a reminder, uh, we have four more presenters after this, after which we will do another investor poll and a sponsor poll. And then we'll open up our breakout rooms and the breakout rooms will be open probably for 30 to 40 minutes. And we expect those to be open relatively soon. And uh, each breakout room will be hosted by one of our 12 presenting companies. So we have 12 breakout rooms. And at that point, you can use the time to uh, go into Q&A or more deep dive stuff. Also, again, our presenting companies are open to doing uh, deep dive meetings, one-on-one -on -one meetings, group meetings next week or the week after. So uh, feel free to let them know if you have some interest. Okay, last call for poll responses. And thank you guys for your participation. So uh, we'll shut down the poll. I'll turn it back over to Mark Haas. Mark. Great, thanks, Tian. So our next company is in the healthcare field. Think about if you get to a hospital, there's all kinds of technology and capabilities there, but if you're not there, uh, it's uh, it can be kind of hit or miss. So for uh, those in a preclinical setting, uh, collapsed lung requires some technology and diagnostics that are not as easily available. So what uh, this next company, Numeric, does is provide uh, a product to, to help solve that problem uh, on the way to the hospital. I'd like to introduce John Ajo, CEO and Chief Medical Officer for Numeric. Thank you for the kind introduction. Um, I'm Dr. Jonathan Ajo, and I'd like to introduce you to our company, Numeric. We have a revolutionary medical device that's going to reinvent how we treat patients in the pre-hospital setting. Pneumothorax is essentially you leak air from the lung into the space in between the chest uh, wall and the lung itself. That can happen after trauma, whether it be motor vehicle accident or whatever cause. This pressure can gradually build up over time in the pre-hospital space. And if you've ever seen the show MASH, ER, and they jab a needle into somebody's chest, they're treating what's called a tension pneumothorax. That's re responsible for about 30% of preventable mortalities in the field, and it has a 100% fatality rate if it's not treated immediately. One of the issues, however, though, is when you do this medical straw decompression or this angiocatheter decompression, the way that you know that you were successful in the pre-hospital space is you quote unquote, hear a gush of air. 
that's the standard in 2022 for both the military and the civilian populations is that you're listening for a gush of air in a battlefield, an ambulance, a helicopter, and the procedure fails pretty consistently. And you end up like this gentleman where they keep repeating the procedure over and over until they think they get it right. We want to remove guessing. We don't want to have a subjective standard. We want to make this objective a binary yes or no that's visual, lightweight, portable, and real time for the providers that are taking care of patients in the field. It was invented by myself and several colleagues at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, and we did both animal and human studies that suggest it's clearly superior to the standard of care. The technology is very straightforward. Just like your can of Coca-Cola has CO2 in it, air in a pneumothorax has CO2 in it, it came from your lung. That makes the gas acidic relative to the atmosphere around you. And basically by using pH paper strips, uh, it's a little more complicated than that, but pH paper indicator, you can tell whether or not you got CO2 or you have room air and you know that you were therapeutic with your procedure or not. The market's large. We're talking about every ambulance, every fire truck, every crash cart, every helicopter uh, that takes care of patients in the free hospital setting. So it's quite large in terms of overall total addressable market, as well as our initial customers, which we think are going to be US EMS and fire personnel. The competitors are bulky, cumbersome, and, and technologically advanced, which is not appropriate for the free hospital setting. Think about a paramedic carrying around a, a large piece of ultrasound equipment. That's not going to happen. Same with spring-loaded angiocatheters. Those require advanced clinical decision-making. And like that gentleman you saw earlier where he had six needles sticking out of his chest, we plan on you know, reducing that number significantly. And even if we save one needle per patient, we're saving economic dollars as well as doing the right thing for the human being. We have two issued US utility patents that are held with Mayo Clinic. We have exclusive, li exclusive licenses for those uh, patents as well as a PCT that covers all PCT participating countries and a US provisional that's held in numerics name. These broadly exclude uh, sensing and uh, designs that could be used to test gas that comes out of the thorax. The team is full of experts. Um, I'm well known in the chest decompression space and, and well regarded, uh, as well as Jonathan Sackner, a well-known regulatory expert, Todd Wiltshire our handles our financial matters, very experienced and Sasha Gentling handles our um, investor relations as well as our business development. Our IP and legal team are the same as Mayo's and our manufacturing is done domestically in the United States. That's for both BARDA compliance as well as just being the right thing to do. Our scientific and strategic advisory board is also comprised of experts, uh, both in the military and in the civilian trauma space that manage uh, ambulances currently and are active, in pra active clinical practitioners. Our forward-looking projections suggest we turn into profitability in year two of, uh, of commercialization. Uh, we do switch over into around 1 million ARR in year two or three of commercialization, and in year five, we hit 10 million ARR. We're raising money via convertible notes. We're about halfway closed on the seed round currently that will get us through the initial manufacturing and regulatory clearance and allow us to commercially sale the product. I'd be happy to take any questions in the breakout room. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Jonathan. Our next company is Snapfeet. And if you've ever bought clothes or shoes online, you know it's kind of a crapshoot. Uh, even somebody as good as Zappos has about a 35% return rate. So it's the, the world is calling out for, for a technology that can reduce that. Um, Snapfeet is a company um, based in Italy, the fashion center of the world, and uses augmented reality to make that return rate uh, as low as possible. Introduced Naur Adno, CEO of Snapfeet. Snapfeet is developing the perfect future shoe shopping experience to help consumers that wants to buy shoes online and avoid any frustration related to bad fitting shoes. Ever happened to you that you order shoes online for yourself or your family? And even though you selected the correct size, the shoes didn't fit? Well, it happened to me. Every company has their fit. And between the same company, shoe models fit differently. From home, you cannot try on. And the result is to return the item. You're not happy. And the company has to deal with your return shoes. Obviously, there's a problem here. Our technology makes the shopping experience more efficient. 
no regrets, no returns, no frustration. Customers will be satisfied and that benefits the brand's image in the consumer's mind. They will buy again from the brand because they're happy. Our company has the perfect technology to help people to buy the correct shoe size online. Consumers can visualize shoes in AR and find the perfect size with accurate 3D foot scanning. How does it work? Imagine you find shoes uh, online that you like. On the product page, you will find Snapfit QR code. Framing it with your phone allows you to try on the shoes in augmented reality, measure your feet, and discover the perfect fitting size. Ordering the perfect shoes has never been easier with our 97% accuracy rate. Shopping habits have changed in recent years. The free return policy cost companies $35 billion last year, spending between $10 and $50 per single return. We're entering a huge market with endless possibilities that will grow by 45% in the next five years. We do have competitors. However, we are the only solution that successfully combines AR try-on, accurate 3D mobile scanning, and size suggesting technologies in a friendly and easy to use app that is 97% accurate in suggesting the perfect size. We are successfully on the market with major luxury brands such as Yuga Boss and Golden Goose, and in pilot phases with companies such as Mitsubishi Corporation Fashion, Loro Piana, Bali, and Saleva. Our team comprises experienced researchers and entrepreneurs with a background in computer vision, AI, luxury, product certification, and finance. We launched SnapFit in April 2022 and expect to reach by the end of the year $250,000 in revenue and 32 million in 2025 with a simple business model based on license subscription and pay-per-click option. We raised $2 million today and we're looking to raise an additional $1.2 million to finalize the product, release the Android app, grow the team, expand to new markets and marketing campaigns. How often were you standing in front of your shoes thinking which one could be the most comfortable to wear for your day meeting or your trip to the lake? Imagine you see nice shoes online and want to buy them, but aren't sure of the most comfortable size. What if I tell you that you can buy the perfect matching shoe online? We're changing shopping online by making people feel good. And with such a small investment, you have the opportunity to do it with us. In the breakout room, I'll tell you more about the opportunity. Thank you. So um, just like feet, there are a lot of windows in the world and they all leak. Our next company is V-Glass and they've developed uh, using a lot of public money, a lot of their own intellectual property, um, a window that is far more efficient than current technologies. I'd like to introduce Mike Pettit, CEO of V-Glass. Thank you, Mark. Hello, everyone. V-Glass has developed platform technology to enable the production of vacuum insulated glass for affordable, ultra high efficiency windows. We solve a very large global problem. More than 3% of the world's energy is wasted due to the thermal inefficiency of today's windows. On a personal level, that's up to 30% of the energy used to heat and cool your home. And while first-generation vacuum glass has been commercially available for more than 20 years, it remains too expensive to achieve mass market penetration. Vacuum insulated glass, or VIG for short, is like a flat transparent thermos bottle for windows. It is century old proven technology. A VIG can insulate three times better than today's dual pane windows. Here you see our unique product design, which involves involves two panes of glass sealed near the edge with spacers between the panes where a vacuum is drawn. The vacuum gap is about the thickness of human hair. This design allows V-glass to be produced at room temperature with significantly higher thermal efficiency and longer life than any window currently offered. Our patented design creates significant competitive advantages. 
The glass has three times the thermal performance of conventional dual pane windows, two times longer life, and costs no more to manufacture. Industry players agree e-glass will disrupt the insulating glass market. We're targeted at residential and commercial buildings globally, a market estimated at 67 billion annually, growing at 3%. The first generation vacuum glass market focused primarily on Asia is estimated at four and a half billion. Our go-to-market strategy leverages existing industry supply chains where we have established relationships. We will license our technology to numerous manufacturers and OEMs, as well as to one or more of the equipment vendors that supply them. We've signed LOIs with multiple companies in each of these categories. Management believes that a likely liquidity event will arise from a large manufacturer relationship. Our traction is led by our, our, our IP portfolio which creates significant barriers to entry. 17 patents have been issued, eight are pending, and more to come. Our seven-year collaboration with a large manufacturer and multiple LOIs demonstrates strong market interest. We've received public funding from our deep relationships with the DOE and NSF. We've been awarded $4 million in 19 separate grants with more to come. Our team is exceptional, poised to take V-Glass to the next level. Our founder and the technical team around him are highly innovative problem solvers, named inventors on more than 200 patents. Leveraging the collaborative relationships you see on the right allows V-Glass to make a disproportionately large impact from a relatively small footprint. As a technology company, V-Glass will generate very high margins under its licensing model and we expect to grow rapidly once commercialization begins. V-Glass has raised $5.5 million to date. We seek 1.5 in a seed round to expand our technical team and accelerate product development. In closing, V-Glass technology enables affordable, ultra high efficiency windows to save energy, reduce greenhouse gas emissions, and warm your home and your office environment. Thank you for your time. I hope to see you in the break room. Thanks so much, Mike. Our last presenting company is WaveTech Group. Uh, WaveTech pro provides uh, energy backup systems for large scale operations. And if we recognize the increasing you know, solar and wind and, and non-traditional energy sources and increasing electrification, uh, these kind of battery and, and energy backup systems are really important. So WaveTech has both uh, hardware and software solutions, and they're grounded in a lot of intellectual property. Pleased to welcome Silas Pohl, CFO of WaveTech Group. At WaveTech, we are disrupting a world powered by batteries. When you actually look into the problem, then that's one that you see globally, um, the underperformance of battery-based um, energy storage systems. The reason for that is mostly because batteries are not reliable, they are not efficient, you don't have any um, true insight into the operating conditions. Um, everything is done manually and not automated. And all of that actually leads to high and increasing costs. So what is WaveTech then and why should you care? Well, at WaveTech, we have two product lines with industry changing outcome, a hardware solution that doubles the battery lifespan and the um, and triples the usable battery capacity, but also reduces electricity cost and electricity consumption by 20%. And then we have a software solution where we monitor, monitor and automate um, network sites, but also batteries, and where we also do a bit of predictive maintenance. But the technology that you see here on the right, that's our key technology, which is globally protected by more than 85 patents. So that's the system that's mounted on top of a battery. So it's not the battery itself, and what it does is when a battery is um, being charged, it sends pulses throughout the battery, which kind of um, accelerates the electrochemical processes within batteries. And because of the faster movement of the ions, you double the battery lifespan and triple the usable capacity. So on top of the current customer base, we currently have more than large enterprise customers in testing and more than 10,000 devices currently in the field. When you look into our market, currently we focus on telecommunications, data centers, and utilities. 
And based on our current customer pipeline and our current targeted numbers of product, that's a 400 million US dollar annual revenue potential. But if we take into consideration the overall potential with these customers, then it goes up to 3 billion. And if we take 10% just out of this M3 overall market, which is a small portion of the for us overall addressable market, that means more than 5 billion US dollar. So you see it's a huge market opportunity. So how are we then different? Well, when it comes to the battery technology, we are unique. Um, we can also work both on new and existing batteries. We have a technology that's globally protected. We also have a very interesting and disruptive R&D pipeline for future products and a world-class science team. When you see some of our customers here, um, you see some household names and you see some people from our team here. Let me highlight just a few. Um, Dark, he's the CEO, CEO and founder of the company, um, very successful serial entrepreneur. He personally invested more than 5 million US dollars into the company and also more than a million and a half in the current round. Then we have Osmond, the chief operating officer. So he's a world-class operator. He used to manage companies with more than 1 billion US dollars in revenues on an annual basis and also participated in a couple of very successful exits. And then we have um, Dr. Monahoff, chief scientific officer. He is a world-class scientist and is also one of the few people that really have some great insight into the US legislation when it comes to batteries. Well, 2020 was kind of the first commercial year with, for us with a bit more than 3 million US dollar in revenues. And 2021 then a bit more than 10 million. This year we target 16 and next year going to uh, 30 million. Where the investment opportunity currently is a convertible note, um, which is a with a 20% discount to the valuation of the institutional round. Um, the entire round is 10 million US dollar, and we already closed like eight and a half out of that. What's really interesting is that we recently signed a term sheet with an institutional investor at a substantially higher valuation than the last round. I'm looking forward um, to all of your questions and seeing you in the breakout room. Thanks a lot. Awesome. Thank you so much, Silas. Let's put up our third and final investor poll. This is for our presenters number um, 9, 10, 11, and 12. So we have um, Numeric Inc., Snapbeat, VGlass, and WaveTech Group. Again, this is for investors only. If you're interested, please indicate. We will not publish this. Uh, we will just keep it confidential and share contact info with the presenting companies. Also, we're gonna open up breakout rooms in a minute or two. Each breakout room, we have 12 of them. Is Each, each room is run by one of our presenting companies. So again, you can use that time to ask more questions and to set up appointments to uh, meet with them in the next couple of weeks. I do have um, a couple program notes while you guys um, answer the poll here. We have our next virtual event is October 27th. So you can register now. And our next in-person event, if you're in the Washington DC area, it will be October 20th in the morning in DC. And we also have one for November 16th in the morning in Baltimore. Um, I think uh, I'm still seeing some uh, votes coming in. So if you could just uh, indicate and then we can move on to our final poll and then we can go into breakout rooms. So I'll leave it open for a few more seconds. Last call for investors for our companies. Okay, uh, let's put up our second and final um, sponsor poll. If you've already answered the poll, then no need to answer it now. This is for guys, people that have joined us late, but um, our sponsors who are listed in our program book are awesome. And they've been very, very supportive of us over the years and they keep everything um, they keep this this program going. So if you have any needs for marketing services or legal services, application development, please indicate and we'll connect you with our, our sponsors. Um, we have accounting, wealth management, health insurance, life insurance. Um, if you're interested in hiring people, and also if you want to sponsor Connectpreneur or present at a future Rocket Pitch event, um, please indicate and we will uh, we'll be back in touch. But we really are grateful for all of your guys' support and for your being here today. Um, and I guess without further ado, we will um, 
get ready to open up our breakout rooms. And again, you're free to go in and out of whatever breakout rooms you guys want. So again, each of our 12 rooms is um, is hosted by one of our presenters. So anyway, uh, we will keep everything open until around one o'clock. So uh, so go ahead and, and you can join, join breakout rooms and we'll see you guys back here. Remember to download your chat transcript before you go into breakout rooms. That way you will have a history of it because I'm sure you're going to have a lot of interested parties and um, you'll want to be able to reference that because I, I don't think you've been able to track the dozens of messages uh, real time. So Anyway, uh, thanks again for joining us. Again, October 22nd, virtual, October 20th in DC, in person. And uh, we'll see you back here in about uh, half an hour or so. Thank you.